Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Community Works. I'm Bernadette Welsh, your host. Our show highlights local nonprofit agencies in our area. Our goal is to educate you, our viewers, about the great work that's going on all around us every day by local agencies and their supporters. When people help their neighbors, everybody benefits. The focus of today's show is a wonderful organization called the Boys and Girls Club of Greater New Haven. And their mission, which they're gonna, my guests are gonna tell us all about in a minute, is about helping teenagers focus on what they need to do in order to be good citizens in our community. So joining me is today, Lisa Brown, who is the teen coordinator for the Boys and Girls Club and the program director, Jennifer Ricker, and ladies, welcome to Community Works. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Okay, Jennifer, can I start with you, if I may? Could you give us the mission and maybe a little bit of the history of the Boys and Girls Club of Greater New Haven? Sure, so the Boys and Girls Club is really about helping the children who need us the most. So we look at how do we help them exactly, as you said, become caring citizens, and we look at our programs to serve them, to help them become academically, socially, emotionally, and physically engaged. Great, that's great. And when did, did the Greater New Haven chapter get started recently, or has it been around for a while? It has been around. It's been around for ages. However, last year we merged the North Haven and Wallingford clubs with the New Haven club. So originally we were just serving the New Haven community, but thanks to the merger, we're now serving close to 1,600 youth a year wow. during throughout North Haven, Wallingford, and New Haven. And then during the school year, it's about 400 to 500 a day. Wow, that's yeah. great. So that segues over to you, Miss Lisa. Can you tell us about the programs? Um, let's see, what does it say here? About the programs, yes. Anything you want to say, lead us off. Okay, so um, we have the Teen Nights and we have Keystone. And that um, the Teen Nights are more so when the kids are like dropping in and they're able to play games and use the gym, um, just get that energy out and you know make connections with their friends or people that they don't know um, while they're there there's people like us um, who are there to help them mentor them give them opportunities um, volunteer work um, community service um, things like that as well as we're playing games with them inside the gym and cooking uh, they're able to use the computers um, the computer lab and the game room um, to their best of ability, of course. Yeah, and then there are people there to help them if they get stuck. Or Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so Jennifer, what can you add to that in terms of programs? I would love to dive more into the Keystone program because the one thing that I think the, the other program that Lisa runs is our Keystone Leadership Program. So can you talk a little bit more about the value of that program? Yes, so with our Keystone program, um, we are working and it stands for basically giving the teens a leadership voice. Uh, they find things in their community uh, where they are seeing like, okay, what do we need help with? What are we gonna do in our community to make a difference? Uh, what do we feel is important to make a difference? Um, and they use their voices together and they come up with ideas for um, fundraising, community service, and then they move on into bigger projects, which this year we'll be focusing on racism. Mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna do that more so inside of the community uh, for the schools um, and how we can outreach the kids in that way. And after all of that throughout the year, we submit to um, the nationals. And uh, if we make enough money and raise enough money, we'll be able to go. Excellent. Well, go, go where? Uh, th that, they don't know. So it's oh. to be determined. Oh, to be determined. <laughs> oh, I love that. this year they did, um, we didn't get to go, but they had it hosted in Dallas, Texas. Uh -huh. Yes. And the year before that, where I did get to go, uh, it was Anaheim, California. Oh, excellent. So in other words, it's all at different locations. Yes. Because there right. are boys and girls clubs all over the United States. That's Absolutely. correct. That's great. Right. Yeah. Jennifer, are there any other programs that you'd like to discuss, or do you, what do you so, feel about that? I think the other thing that I would love to highlight when it comes to our teen program, because of course we have our youth programming that a lot of people know about. We have our summer camps, we have our after school programs. 
What I don't think a lot of people know is a good portion of the people that work in our after school programs or our youth programs are high schoolers. Mm -hmm. oh. And one of the things we do is we really make sure it's not just about giving teenagers jobs, but it's really about helping them build the skills they need to be successful. So in addition to all that Lisa does for Keystone and running the team notes on Friday nights, she also runs a workforce development program that in the summertime provides them one day a week of just classroom training Training wow. for financial literacy, social emotional about, development like in the res workplace. resumes. Resume building, yes, we do. We also did that as well as cover letters and recommendations. Excellent. Um, so yes, they got to make make a mock one, uh, but ones where they're actually able to use them. Wow. Um, if they needed to, you know, look at other jobs and stuff like that, I made sure to let them know how to do that um, and what they would need to do that. That's wonderful. I remember back in back in my day, if the guidance counselors didn't help us out, mm -hmm. we really didn't have much recourse as to what was going on, because in my generation, my parents, you know, weren't even high school graduates. So, you know, it's it's a, a different world. Mm -hmm. But it all goes back to support, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a guidance counselor, your parents, a, a caring aunt or uncle the Boys or Girls Club, whatever it is, we all, our young people need support. Yes. So I think it's wonderful. The programs you're outlining, t totally love it. And I think you kind of asked, why are these programs so important to the youth to participate? <laughs> well, we just, we just said that, didn't we? Yeah. Didn't we see that? Is there any other, I don't know, I guess, does it build self-confidence, Lisa? For the teens? Yes. Absolutely. I think it builds, like, a significant level of self-confidence because they know like with the opportunities that they're getting like it's someone to lean on uh, you did just mention like uh, a lot of guidance counselors aren't helping or they're overwhelmed by the kids that they do have um, so they don't get that support they maybe get five ten minutes uh, but for being at the Boys and Girls Club and doing teen nights or doing the youth, de um, youth development programs we are able to support them for as long as they need us. Um, and we're just a call away and we're giving them the tools so that they're able to transition into adulthood um, way smoother than many other kids would without having us. For sure, for sure, that makes perfect, that makes perfect sense to me. Okay, so Jennifer, can you tell me how kids are selected and is there, a, is it ends at 18 or how do kids get into the program? So, Self-selection. We are opening our doors to absolutely anybody that wants to join us. So whether you're in New Haven, North Haven, or Wallingford, or we even have students that come from West Haven mm -hmm. and the surrounding areas, if you are interested in joining us on Tuesday nights or Friday nights from 5 to 7, mm -hmm. then we are here for you. Excellent. So do the school, can you publicize in the schools? Or is it like posters and things of that nature so the kids know that you know, that they know who to contact. Yes, yeah. and part of the program is having the teens. Well, you mm -hmm. can talk about that, Lisa. What do the teens do to advertise the program? Oh, good question, very good. Yes, we do flyers. So we've had them do flyers because most of them do go to New Haven schools now. Um, so they're putting flyers up inside their schools and meeting up with friends so that if they're in a different school, they're able to put them up in their schools as well. Um, and then next week we'll be working on how to um, construct an email so that they're able to give it to the guidance counselors as well that if we are not able to reach them, um, that there is in their email for the guidance counselors to give to the kids if they need another program. Excellent, good, because again, ignorance sometimes is your worst enemy. Yeah. And if you don't know that there's a program available, how can you benefit from it? Mm -hmm. so, very good, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. <laughs> okay, now I know we talked about the three locations, but let's talk about that again. Whoever, Lisa, why don't we talk about the locations and about transportation, and let's repeat those hours of operation. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so we are in New Haven, and we do offer transportation, and it's for kids that are not able to get there, but they really want to join. Um, so I do offer transportation, and we do have a Boys and Girls Club van um, that <laughs> we do. It is and cool. It is cool. <laughs> um, and that that holds a good amount of kids, so that we're able to bring them home as well. Um, and 
Our operation hours are Tuesdays and Fridays, and it's from 5 to 7 both days. Excellent, excellent. That's great, that's great. All right, let's see. What, do I, what else do we have here? Okay, now let's do this. We're going to go take a little break from our blah, 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 <laughs> and we're going to look at a collage of pictures that my wonderful director, Alex and Cindy, have created for us from the photographs that the ladies sent me. So, Jennifer, let's start with you. What is happening in the first photo? Oh, I got it. I can do it. Oh, Lisa's Lisa. going to drive this. What's happening <laughs> in that first photo over there? Absolutely. They're playing, um, I believe it's... Oh, I can't think of the name right now. Headbands. Either. It's like a headbands game. <laughs> oh, there okay. we go. Headbands. Okay. Yes, it's a headband, headband game, and they are actually guessing right now. It, you can't see on the other side, but there's another group of teens that are competing so we can get the most, uh, which was actually so, so fun to do for them. It was, uh, they had a long day. Um, this is our, on our Mondays. So we're just taking a few minutes just to play a game and recollect ourselves right after. Great. And the picture over here with the certificates? <laughs> Who wants yes. to tell me about that? Yes, yeah, so the kids right now are in that picture. They were uh, getting certificates for their outstanding achievements for that the program in general. Um, we had a few of them which were silly ones, so we have a few class ca class clowns, which you can see he's on the floor <laughs> on his knee right now. Yep. Uh, and we have a few others where it was best participation for the program um, and most of them all were pretty much all getting an award, basically being recognized for doing an extended job in that program. And you know, it reminds me too of how important it is to have a little something, like a piece of paper or something mm -hmm. that says, you, you know, you've done good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, now I think I'm looking at basketball. Why are they playing basketball? Why is that important? This is our teen nights. Um, so this is uh, a couple of the boys um, who are playing basketball and Fortunately, I'm playing. I, I'm not playing at this moment, so you don't see me <laughs> okay. almost getting hit with the ball. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, we're getting the energy out. This is where we're taking them from, you know, the streets, and you know, giving them something to actually do. And they're playing amongst themselves, learning each other, learning new friendships. So oh. that's why they're playing basketball. Yeah, getting the uh, getting the energy out is important for teenagers. Yeah. And what about? I see the one with the kids raising their hand. What's going on there? That is M&T Bank with us, and he's asking questions because he just went through um, some of the stuff about, you know, banking, saving, opening financial, basically open up financial literacy, letting them know uh, how to, you know, navigate their money uh, and different ways to do that. Um, what to look out for about mm -hmm. fraud and all that stuff. So they were raising their hand because he was asking a question uh, to them and quizzing them to see if they actually knew the answer. And you could see most of them <laughs> actually did. Yeah, they did. I did. <laughs> and how polite. Okay, and our last photo with the kids looking at the screen. What is happening there? So this is at one of the seminars that we were doing. Uh, we were at um, and teamed up with Southern Youth Entrepreneurs. So this is at Southern, actually, and these are kids ranging from, I believe, um, 13 all the way up to 18. Um, and they're actually, I believe they were learning about um, how to show up for work. Uh, um, and, yes. you know, how is your attitude? Would you hire yourself? Um, so just reflecting on uh, what it means to be a good employee and what to look for and the qualities that you should have when you walk into work. Um, so they're 100% engaged and they actually enjoy that. Yeah, I see that. Okay, well, Alex, I think we can go back and thank you very much. Okay, thank you. That was wonderful, Lisa. And you gave Jennifer a nice rest. She got to stand <laughs> back there and be so proud. She got to be so proud. Okay, so those were great photos. Okay, this is a question I love to ask. I love it. It's about a success story. And Jennifer, I am going to start with you. Okay. <laughs> Give Lisa a little bit of a break. She's been talking. Lisa, tell us about your success story. So I can talk from a personal standpoint, and I have permission for this, so I just want to throw that out there to begin with. Is So I am a teen mom. Or not a teen mom. I am a mom of a teenager, there I should go. say. There you go. <laughs> and being a mom of a teenager, you see the struggles that teens are facing today. It's a different world than what I grew up with. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up on Friday nights, we went ice skating or we went to hang out at the mall. And I just don't see those opportunities existing anymore. And watching my own teen daughter really 
look at where do I go to connect? How do I build those relationships? How do I find people that I can just relate with or mm -hmm. just hang out with? This creates that environment for her. A and safe environment. It for does. Her. And I've never seen her happier. She has made more <laughs> friendships since she's been there. And it's just really, it's fabulous to pick up your child and say, how was it? And she's smiling and she wants to go back next Friday yeah. night. And it's something she looks forward to. I love it. I love it. You can't, I'm glad you asked your daughter if you could do that. <laughs> and she said yes. And that's probably because she's very proud of what she's doing there. Yes, for yeah. sure. She is, she is. It, it's really, Lisa just runs so many amazing programs and it's just a great opportunity. And that she's also in her Keystone Leadership Program. Yes. And go. building skills and just loves it. Yeah, excellent. Okay, Lisa, do you have a success story for me? I do. Um, being at the Boys and Girls Club um, is one of the best things that I can do. Um, and every opportunity I got, it's like you always start from the ground up and you build. Um, and I started off this program with just two teens in Wallingford. And um, we ended up in two months, we got a total of six. And I was celebrating that. Uh, during the summer, we did end up sadly taking a halt mm -hmm. uh, on the program. And we were able to, at the end of September, we were able to start gaining momentum in New Haven. Uh, and it went from just a, a couple kids of like four to five, and then it built quickly up to 21 kids. 21. 21 kids. Uh, as you can see, they were playing the basketball. So yes, the, those <laughs> were some of the kids. Um, and we're rapidly building even from there. Uh, so it's quickly, it's, it changed over time and in less than a year. I'm reaching out to kids who were just walking past in the neighborhood. And you know, New Haven's been there for quite some time. So it's like you walk there so many times and now you're, you're gravitating into us and we want more of that. Um, so building from just two to 21, it's just amazing. Yeah. So your success story is the program yeah. is, the, is the success story. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's very important. Um, we sometimes get discouraged when things start off slow, yeah. but in this case, you know, it just it just takes time. Yeah, it, and it was obviously worth it. Yeah. obviously worth it. That is just super duper. Okay, so now, aha, here's that question about how do we support? <laughs> how do we support the Boys and Girls Club of Greater New Haven? So first, let me ask: Do you need volunteers? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody listening to this program could contact you and say they want to help volunteer. Absolutely. Where do the volunteers come from? Are they the parents? Are they, Je Jennifer, yeah, so where do the, they come from? They come from all over, actually, because mm -hmm. we have volunteers not only in the team program, but also in our youth programs as well. So, for example, we are partnering with the New Haven Tutoring Initiative, which is for with the city of New Haven. and. United Way is the funding source, partnering with New Haven Rees. There's a lot of groups that are helping me, helping me make this happen. They are bringing team volunteers to us that are doing tutoring after school for the youth. We have some people that are coming in and we have a concession stand at Yale that we run on Saturdays. That gets the teens to raise money for mm -hmm. these trips that Lisa's talking about. Mm -hmm. We have them come in through anyone that just contacts us, whether it's a university or different companies and organizations within New Haven. Right, and sometimes kids have to do community service in order to graduate. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Um, that's where most of our target comes from, actually. Yes. A lot of kids are like, hey, I need this to graduate, or I have four more hours, I have 10 more hours, what can I do? Um, so I always look for those kids, and I, I already shoot them emails, parents emails, hey, I know your kid is a freshman, but you know we can get this done, uh, while also giving them other opportunities as well. I so, love it. Yeah. I love it. So one, we know that you need the you need the volunteers. Okay. So how about funding support? I know we mentioned the concession stand. Um, can people just donate money, or is there a special fundraising event that you ladies would like to tell our viewers about? We are about to start our year end campaign, so the timing is perfect. And so that's one way that you can give is just going to our website and we have a donate now button on the bottom of our website so you can easily donate through there. Okay, we're gonna see that website information I think 
Okay, so tell us, see that www thing? So it's www.bgcgnh.org. Great. And there's a contact number there. So mm -hmm. if they go to the website, there's that Donate Now button. Right. Great. And will they find maybe a little bit more information if they want to need a little refresher? Although they're going to be listening to our program and know everything there is to know <laughs> about your wonderful program. But again, that, that's great. So we're going to encourage people to do that, the, the donation button. Yes. Um, anything else in the way of support? Do you need companies to get involved or maybe kids practice their things in front of real company representatives? How might that work? So there's um, the wish list we should mention as well, is we have a wish list. So oh, if people want to say, yes, there's a lot of supplies that we need that just make everything yes. work the way they should, whether yes. it's markers or basketballs. I don't know, PlayStations mm -hmm. <laughs> would be really nice. <laughs> so all of those big ticket items, but also the smaller on our wish list. And then we have a lot of companies in New Haven as well that'll call us and say, we have a volunteer day. Yeah. And there's always something that we can have help with, whether it is with our holiday activities that are coming up. We have companies that come in and do Thanksgiving meals or breakfast with Santa is a big deal as well. <laughs> Painting, things like that. Yeah, I like that. So. There are a lot of different ways the community can support the Boys and Absolutely. Girls Club. Obviously, you need financial contributions. Every organization does. Um, but the fact that they can all say donate in kind mm -hmm. and they can come and show up and volunteer and take some of the workload is, I think, a wonderful thing mm -hmm. for everybody to know that they can do. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Lisa, about support? Um, yeah. Our we have an Amazon wish list for the teens, and I know um, a lot of the stuff that they need are a little bit more expensive because they're teenagers. But um, one of the biggest things that they actually really did did want was a PlayStation 4. Uh, they are bringing in their own, but um, they would rather have so that they're able to have it right there. Um, so And controllers, they don't really have any of those. So that's like the biggest thing that they wish that they had um, instead of just bringing their own and breaking their controller there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we're letting our viewers know that, that these are the things that if they are so moved that they can they can help out. They can go to the website or Absolutely. send in a, shoot it shoot the information over to you nice yeah, ladies. Absolutely. That's super duper, super duper. Okay, so all right. What inspire? I know we've been talking about what inspires you to do this. I know we have been talking about. <laughs> how, you've heard them say that, right? But but let let's let's do it some more of that. Lisa, what has inspired you to be a part of this? Maybe it's your own personal experience growing up. I mean, what inspires you? Um, I think what inspires me to want to work with kids is because when I was young. I didn't really feel like I had a voice um, and I was quiet and thankfully I did find a theater teacher randomly in the hallway one day leaving school um, and she kind of gave me a voice and she was my mentor and uh, by coincidence I went to high school without having a contact of her and she was my theater teacher there uh, which was uh, the most exciting thing on my first day of school. Um, so I think what really truly inspired me was knowing that someone cared about me and they gave me a voice and she wanted to know what she can do and how to help. And that's exactly what I want to do for the kids that I serve now. I think it's an excellent, excellent, uh, inspiring story. I mean, and theater is an awfully great way to get rid of the fears of, of of doing a lot of things that we all have to do in our daily lives is getting in front of people and uh, presenting ideas. And when you make believe, it, it gets to be even fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, getting in front of people and expressing your ideas. Now that's a great story. Okay, Jennifer, other than your daughter, I know your daughter inspires <laughs> you, but what inspires you about this program that we're talking about today? So. I had an experience in my past where I did not feel empowered. And in watching my children grow up, I thought, you know, I want to do something that helps them understand that their choices, their actions, not only impact them, but impact those around them. And that's how I got into youth development to begin with. And I just 
walking into the club every single day, you see these smiles and you see these little ones and you think, wow, this is worth it. There's one little boy when I walk in, he just says, friend, friend, <laughs> not sure he knows my name. <laughs> but the fact that he's excited to see me means that my presence means something to him. And to me, that's worth showing up every day. Yeah, I, I love that too. Again, we forget that our presence and our caring or just saying hello mm -hmm. or how you doing mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. can inspire a child yeah. to um, to get through the day sometimes because yeah. we don't know what goes on in the home Correct. right it could have been a really rough morning for the mom or grandma mm -hmm. trying to get them to school or dad trying to get off to work and because they're hectic and the child feels like well they didn't even give me my lunch money today, yeah. you know? So I think you, you ladies are really getting to the, the, the crux of what children need to learn, and that is to, to feel loved and accepted. Yeah. Yes, for sure. For sure they do. Okay, well, you ladies are wearing what? Can we see them? We're wearing sneakers? Yes. We live in sneakers. Why do, you, <laughs> why do you live in sneakers? You never uh, know when you're going to take off after a child. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You cannot wear heels and then have to bend down for the little <laughs> sneaker tying. You have to be you have to be ready. Um, and I am competitive. So the kids <laughs> normally are like, oh, Miss Lisa, let's play basketball. And I'm like, me? I don't know what a three-pointer is, but I'll do it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I have to wear my sneakers. <laughs> um, so you, you just have to be ready. You yeah. do, um, especially for the little challengers as well. That was like, oh, I can run faster than you. And I'm like, I bet you, you can. <laughs> they always do. But I have my sneakers, so I'm ready. <laughs> I like it. I really do like it. Um, again, it's that whole thing of your expectations of what's going to happen are are in your mind you know mm -hmm. and so you're dressed accordingly yeah. and yeah. you know yeah. what what's better than that yeah. though they always say you have to be prepared yes yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. and it's always good to be prepared and i think when, when the children see that an adult is coming to them mm -hmm. and reaching down and bringing them up mm -hmm. and you're wearing sneakers just like they're wearing sneakers mm -hmm. but again it's a relationship thing yeah. That, yeah. that I think you both agree is pretty cool yeah, yeah. it is pretty cool. I was at the middle school last year and I surprised them because they were playing kickball and I thought <laughs> you're playing kickball I'm playing kickball too and I kicked the ball, and one of the girls said, you kick it really well for an old person. <laughs> <laughs> and she went it. back, and I said, thank you. I do <laughs> kick it really well. But I think you're right. When you, when you show them that you are ready to meet them where they're at, Absolutely. that's yeah. why we wear sneakers. I love it for you not doing too bad for an old person. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If I were to volunteer, they'd say, oh, my goodness. <laughs> what is that lady doing here? Oh, well, it looks like we're about running out of time. <laughs> but I really want to thank um, Jennifer and Lisa for being such great guests. We learned so much about the Boys and Girls Club of Greater New Haven. We learned about the funding, and we learned about volunteering, and we learned about their amazing programs that inspire young people to be the best that they can be. And that's what we want for our society. We want young people growing up, and when they become adults, they already know that they're on their way to doing even better things because they've been given such a great foundation of help from the Boys and Girls Club of Greater New Haven. So I hope you've enjoyed our program. Thank you, ladies, for being on the program. And I hope you will tune in for another edition of Community Works. I'm Bernadette Welsh, your host, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.